male frogs are turning into female frogs, a study finds. Toxic chemicals found in lakes and ponds are turning male frogs into female, according to a surprising new study published in the Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That must mean that uh, their hormones uh, are in a terrible state of disarray. Researchers sampled hundreds of young frogs from 21 ponds in Connecticut and found that estrogenic waste was contributing to the unusually high number of female frogs found in the water. Newsweek reports, the scientists led by Yale University researcher David Skelly and doctoral student Max Lambert were surprised to find that the extent of development was strongly linked to the proportions of females. Ponds and forests contained lower proportion of females, whereas males were in the minority in some areas of the suburbs. Previous work by Skelly's group found a large percentage of female characteristics in male frogs in the same bodies of water. All 34 ponds examined by Skelly and team turned up males whose testicles also contained eggs. That's very strange. The development of such intersex or hermaphroditic traits have been linked to endocrine disrupting chemicals like the herbicide atrazine. But much of the work in this area has focused on agricultural chemicals. This is one of the first studies to suggest that estrogenic wastes from suburban homes and yards are directly affecting frogs and perhaps other animals as well, Skelly says. Quote, this is literally bringing it into our backyards, end quote. Lambert says that they were surprised to find that estrogenic chemicals from plants may be playing a major part. Compared with forest ponds, he found large quantities of phytoestrogens in suburban water bodies. These chemicals, which can mimic estrogen and affect the sexual development of frogs and other animals, including humans, including humans, are produced by plants such as clover and other legumes, such as soybeans and peanuts, for example. It could be that just by maintaining a lawn and removing native plants from your yards, humans could be impairing the hormonal development of animals. Chemicals that have this effect, like bisphenol A, are called endocrine disruptors. Lambert says, quote, this shows that endocrine disruption is a much more diverse phenomenon than we previously realized, end quote. The study also turned up traces of other estrogenic chemicals called estrones, which are excreted by humans and other animals under normal circumstances, but they did not find any trace of synthetic estrogens like those contaminated, uh, contained in birth control pills. The endocrine disrupting chemicals may be coming from lawns and leaking septic and water systems, says uh, as Kelly, although they have not conclusively determined their source. In the most sexually skewed suburban pond, the number of female frogs born during the study period was almost double that of males. The scientists also found that in the forests, the number of males actually outnumber the females with more than 60% of animals born ending up male. That came as a surprise and raises a number of questions about what a natural quote unquote gender ratio is in these animals, Skelly says. The study concerned green frogs, that is the scientific name Rana clamitans, which are quite common throughout the eastern United States and Canada. Quote, this is an extremely important study that should make us all think about the collateral damage of suburbanization to natural ecosystems, end quote, said Brad Schaefer, the researcher at UCLA who was not involved in the paper, quote, Amphibians are very sensitive bioindicators, and this study shows that suburbanization has profound impacts on the life history of a common, seemingly resilient species of frog. The observation that the amount of landscaping is having a quantitative effect on the sex determination and population biology of frogs 
in a nearby pond is amazing. And put one of the strongest arguments that humans are medicating our environment and disrupting the development of animals like frogs was put forward more than 20 years ago by scientist Theo Colborn and discussed at length in her 1996 book titled Our Stolen Future. Skelly says she did not receive the kind of acclaim that a similarly revolutionary scientist or writer like Rachel Carson did, though in part because not all of the evidence was there at the same time at that time, but studies such as this one are beginning to prove Colborn was correct, Skelly adds. This is on Your Newswire by Sean Adeltabadabai. Kindly support by contributing to my Patreon account. You'll find it in the description box below. Thank you.